Hey, what's up, boxers? This is Zach Rizet with Build Box. This is part two in the How to Build Your Own Video Game series, so let's jump back into it. And let's add in a little movement to our character. So I'm gonna go over here to the movement menu, and I'm going to just grab out a move node. And so this is gonna be real simple. So what this does is by hooking it up straight from the start node to the move node, it's going to start moving right away because as soon as it starts, it starts moving. It, there's no delay, there's no new, there's no touch. If you wanted to add some controls in, which we're gonna do later for the jumping, you would do something like touch and then it, it would be sort of an in-between start and move. And we'll see that here in a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete the touch node for right now. And what we want to do is, if we look at our 3D world, um, I'm also going to move this rotation back to zero again because it's just unnecessary. I just wanted to use that as an example. When we are moving down our scene, I want to kind of give you an idea here. And I'm going to also move the ground down a little bit as well, just so you can kind of see that grid, you know, poking out a little bit better. It's a little bit easier to see now. So I want you to understand that this direction right now, I'm moving my mouse, going this way to the right is the in the Z direction, okay? So the blue is going to be the Z direction back and forth here. Green is going to be the Y in the Y axis moving up and down. And then the X is red and is gonna be moving side to side. Okay, so I just wanna give you a quick idea on that. Let's go ahead, let's make this character start moving down the Z axis and I'm not sure I think this is uh, I think this is gonna be positive or it, it might be negative actually so let's let's test that out um, so I'm going to change the move direction in the Z direction to 5 and so I think it actually might be negative 5 yeah okay great so let's go ahead and let's change it to negative 5 instead and also I'm gonna exit out of my preview since I made this adjustment to the ground here in the start scene I probably also want to hit command C since I'm on a Mac or if you want to hit control C if you're on a PC you want to make a copy of this and then I'm gonna go over here I'm gonna delete this first ground and I'm gonna paste in the ground again and you can see that it's been lowered it's a, an exact copy of this one and so now it should be set up perfectly so that it's gonna be nice and smooth as the character moves down the path so we changed the we changed the move speed in the Z direction to negative five instead. So now we're gonna see the cube moving away and it's gonna be moving down the path. And that's what we want, that is what we want. However, we're going to change the camera direction so that we can see it a little bit better. So let's go ahead and do that. And, and first thing is that I wanna change is I wanna make it so that the camera actually follows the character because right now the character's just moving down and it's it's just moving away and you can't you can't really see it after a while. So let's go ahead, let's take the camera, let's change the position follow to character. And so now, now this camera is going to follow along with the character depending on which follow force you give it. So let's go ahead and let's press play and let's see. Now you can see that the character is not really moving out of the frame, okay? It's staying with it. The character is moving, is, except we don't have enough stationary objects to see that you, you're you actually moving past it. Right now it looks like it's not moving at all. It looks like it's just, it's just uh, sitting there, but that's not the case, it's actually moving. And you'll see that here in a little bit, a little bit easier. I'm going to press X on my preview. I'm gonna exit out of my preview. And now let's also get the jump going. Okay, let's get the jump working. And I'm going to d double click on my main character, go into my main character's node map. And just like I said before, I'm going to add in a touch node. And so when I touch the screen, I want something to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up start to touch. And when I touch the screen, I want the character to jump and so I'm going to just bring in a jump node and so once the touch screen is pressed or once once the screen is pressed then I want it to jump and I want it to jump with a force of let's give it 10 um, in the y direction a positive 10 so it's going to go upwards so let's go ahead and press play real fast okay awesome and we can see we've got a sweet jump going on here you can see that it's moving down and it's jumping. So cool, we've got the makings of greatness now. We've, uh, we're, we're underway, but let's go ahead and let's make this even better. So one thing that I wanna do is I want to change the camera view so that it's not behind the character because you're not gonna be able to see things very well and that's just not the game design that we want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually put this in camera mode 
right now. And I'm going to now move and rotate to the side. And this is what I'm doing now. Now that I put it in camera mode, this is what your the player and this is what your player is going to see. And this is what's going to be shown in the preview. And so now when I'm repositioning my view, I'm actually repositioning the camera view. So I get a much better look at what's happening in my game. So I'll go ahead and press play again. And you can see that camera view is now reflected in the preview window. Okay, awesome. You can see that there's a little bit of rotation going on here, and that that naturally happens with physics when it drops. It's not a it's not dropping just completely flat. So we need to change it though so that it's not rotating left and right or, or along the um, the Y is what it's doing is it's spinning along the Y axis. So I'm going to exit out of my preview. I'm going to take it out of camera mode now. I'm going to go into my main character. I'm going to select my start node. I'm going to change the position factor, or actually I'm going to to change the rotation factor on this. So if I change the rotation factor in the Y to zero, you're not going to see any more rotation um, is spinning around. None of, none of that business is going to be happening anymore because I've lowered the rotation factor to zero. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and now let's make it so that this character does a little flip and I want to also add in a jump limit. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to break out some code that I've written here before. I'm using this as an example. I'm gonna move it to the side and I'm gonna show you how I program this. And I got a little help here from our CTO here at BuildBox, Nick Rodenko, who is a master programmer and he is always there to help me out with my coding questions. So let's go ahead and let's dress this up a little bit and make it so that you have a jump count and a jump limit. So first of what I wanna do is I'm gonna add in some attributes. Okay, that's, this, that's step one is you wanna add in some place where you can put in a jump limit and you also want to put in an angular velocity, which is how we're gonna do the flip. First, I just want an, a, just a straight up number. Okay, I wanna, I wanna be able to say, okay, I want my jump limit to be three. And so I just want to be able to put in a single number and I'm gonna call this jump limit. Okay, perfect. Okay, and I'll be able to put, you know, jump limit two or jump limit three or jump limit 11, whatever the heck you want, okay? And so now what I need to do is I need to add in a variable called jump limit. I'll do that right now. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put in var and then jump limit. And this is going to represent the number now that is being put in here for jump limit. I'm gonna send it in and it's gonna be represented by this jump limit variable. But what I need to do is I need to add in, I need to connect this attribute to that variable. And so the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna just make a real, do this real fast. I'm gonna make a copy of this one and I'll just paste it right here. And I'm gonna change jump force and let me space this out a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. Sometimes code can get a little crowded and that's I think that's where people get confused is it just it's like it's a big smush of a bunch of um, letters, variables and, and functions and stuff. So this giving you a little bit spa of space is nice. So okay, we've got our jump limit variable here. We're gonna set it to this attribute and right now it's set to jump force. But what we wanna do is we wanna set it to jump limit instead. So we're gonna set it to jump limit, perfect. And then now, whatever number we put in here for jump limit is going to be straight, is gonna be transferred, and now jump limit is gonna be equal to that number. So right now, jump limit is equal to whatever number we put in for the jump limit attribute, which is two. So now jump limit equals two. Next thing we need to do, so that's one line of code, two lines of code. We need to add in a little bit of logic here so that everything, everything works you know, logically within our signal function. Okay, we're gonna do it all here in the signal function. So one thing I wanna do right now is I want to add in another, you see this little plus sign here? This is gonna allow me to add in another input. Okay, and so what I what I wanna do is, we'll, and we'll get to that. Um, I, actually, I think I'll hold off on that right now. I'm gonna open up the, click this little marker here and this opens up the code again. And I'm gonna add in another input later. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna reset the jump limit. Okay, for right now, Let's go ahead and let's name, let's go ahead and start by adding in a function if, let's 
go ahead and hit tab. Then if name equals equals enabled. So if the name of the signal is enabled, and that's what that's what this is. So when the touchscreen is pressed, it sends a signal to enabled. And so this is going to be fired off. So now the name or the value of enabled is going to be set to true. And so and so it's checking to see, okay, is enabled true right now? And it is or it will be once it touches the screen. And so let's go ahead and let's figure out what we want to happen if that is true. So I'm gonna add it in here. I'm gonna go ahead and tab everything else over a little bit. So it makes it a little bit easier. I'm gonna have to do this probably a few times just cause I want it to be clean and easy for you guys to see. So be patient with me on the tabbing, I'll, I'll get there. So let's go ahead and move those over. And then I wanna line up the, this if uh, I opened up here the brackets and I want to close that bracket so I'm gonna go ahead and do it down here and so now this if loop is closed right here with that lower bracket so everything now is inside of this if statement and you know what boxes I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here before it gets too long so keep an eye out for part three in how to build your own video game we're gonna finish up coding up this jump limit and also resetting the jump whenever the character hits a platform so I'll see you in part three